It's Aaron's 499 race day, and I promised I would send this to Daniela Mane to kind of commemorate that. So, this one's for you, Donnie. Talladega! 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 Let's go, restrictor plate racing, boys. Boogity, boogity, boogity. All right, white flag. One more lap to go. Reddick led at the white flag. Who's going to be leading at the checkers? It's a miracle they didn't wreck before the white flag. So if they wreck now, the race is over no matter what. My bad. I didn't mean to cut the video off. Here comes Gregson. Reddick wins the air. It's 4.99 at Talladega. They crash at the finish line. The big one in the trioval. Who was that airborne? Gregson got a. Wait a minute. Oh my God. Who was that up in the air? Who flipped upside down? Tyler Reddick won the. Uh, I thought Gregson was gonna have the run. I was gonna. Get, I was getting ready to go crazy. Oh my God! Poor Michael McDowell had that race won. Goes to show you, it's not over till it's over. Oh my God! My left leg is shaking from all that. What the fuck just happened? Who flip? Who who had a near flip? And is everybody okay? Oh my God! Okay, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. I thought Gregson had a had a had a shot to win. They waited till the last fucking rep, rep, lap to wreck. Him Block me once, that's okay. Block me twice, you're going up in the grandstands or you're going in the wall. See? Man, Gregson got Mayhem through it. A bunch of them got by unscathed. Are you kidding me? Okay, very okay. But Gregson got a career best third. Hell yeah. Hemre got 13th. Michael Jordan. Yeah. Stop it. Get some help. No, I'm just kidding. Man, Reddick is climbing the fence like Tony Stewart used to do back in the mid-2000s. It's starting at the Pepsi Firecracker 400, which was the... Also, a race he won in 2009 where it said, but there's just a race with, where uh, the phrase, block me once, that's okay, block me twice, you're going up in the grandstand, you're going in the wall originated when Smoke Red Kyle Bush to win that race coming to the checkers. The first win by a non Gibbs Hendrick driver since the Cracker Barrel 500 at Atlanta Motor Speed, Atlanta Super Speedway, when my dad's favorite driver, Daniel Suarez, won. Good race today, everybody. Good race. I mean, there is so much to unpack in today's Aaron's 4.99 at Talladega. But first, we have a, we have some oh, we have some uh, like a sponsorship to plug and a few shout outs to 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 like you know you know give out. One was requested and one is just you know an unexpected random one. We'll get the shout outs out of the way first. I was requested shout out to my neighbor who is basically. Just as tall as me now, Shane Zachary. I look forward to seeing you when it finally starts really, really warming up next weekend, going into early as early as next week, which is going to be upper 60s first. It's going to work its way up to the lower 70s, then mid 70s. And then by next Sunday, during the NBA and Platinum 400. And then the following day, the first two 80, 80 degree days of the 2024 season, which can only mean one thing for next Sunday. We're not watching the NBA and Platinum 400 on Sunday, next Sunday, because we're going to enjoy beautiful weather with our friends in the happiest place in Northeast Ohio. And 
hopefully record some content out there. So be on the lookout for the possibility of that. And then just a random unexpected shout out to my number one boy best friend, Caden Clapham's little bro, Lincoln, who just finally rejoined TikTok after getting banned three years ago on his original account. It was good to see you at his basketball game back in, on December 29th, this past winter during season three of Winter Wonderland. So I look forward to saying what TikTok content you have. And for the love of God, please don't get banned again. When I go see go see Casey play some play softball with Isabella Kucherik or, or see Hattie play softball with her Diamond Bells and Kaylee Payne, I better see you there, Lincoln or Caden or hell, even Casey too. But, oh yeah, I, before we get on to the race, we have to plug a sponsorship here, like, you know, a sponsorship, which is a fundraiser to be, to, to be exact. I went to Berea High School in the Sandhurst era, in the Sandhurst days in Brook Park when I um, was a teenager with Leah Coulter and Chris Hampton. And unfortunately for Leah, her car was stolen by a drunk driver and it was this drunk driver was involved in a wreck so the car was totaled. So unfortunately it's damaged beyond repair and she can't get it back. So she, and but that makes it even, that's not the problem though. What makes it even worse is all of her you know, she has a couple kids. She got a man named Chris Hampton. And so, therefore, all of the, her kids' belongings were in that car. So, she ended up losing everything. Some of her personal belongings were in there, too. So, if you can go, if you can't, you know, if you have that kind of money to donate to her to her charity to help her and her, Chris and the, the kids and the family get the justice and help, justice they deserve and help they need, please do so. Link is in the description. But, if you can't share it, I mean, if you can't donate, then a good share on TikTok is good. A good share on any social media platform is good. And a reshare of their, of Leah's TikTok post is great too. So therefore, please do, you know, please go out of your way if, if, if possible and do that for them. Please and thank you. So with that, all that shit out of the way, the shout outs and the sponsor plugs, it's time to talk about the Aaron's 499 at Talladega. What I called the Aaron's Carnage and Chaos 499 at Talladega. Oh my goodness gracious, where the fuck do we start? I mean, after, this is just a sequel to last night's YouTube crossover with Sync VR. So, therefore, I called it. I mean, Conrad McDonald, aka C Red TV, called it. The first half was clean as a whistle. Only cautions were for stages, you know, stage breaks, where it was incident free. And as, as you know, the normal plate racing in a nutshell, it could only meant one thing. The second half stage, the whole stage three, overtime or not, was going to be a demo derby shit show. And that it was. Well, it was not egregiously bad, where it just kept being wreck after wreck after wreck, which caused green white checker after green white checker after green light checker and like in the Aaron's 312 yesterday but it was quite it was up there it was up there even with no overtimes and no wreck with on the penultimate lap so but they just waited until they were coming to the checkered flag like last year's EA Sports 500 to take it take it take each other out and I hope Corey LaJoy is okay I think he, uh, Bob Pockers reported he got out under his own power but Man, we finally got our first flip in 2024. That motherfucker not only, you know, crossed the line up on his side and though, but he also actually went flipped all the way over, did a singular like Robbie Gordon barrel and back on the wheels of that upside down not, not, nice number seven car was a 19th place car. It, that's fucking as, as, just as mind blowing as my favorite driver, Austin Dillon's up, upside down wrecked race on the 2015 Pepsi Firecracker 400 being a seventh place car. Goes to show you how that, that that's how restrictor plate racing is. You could cross the line upside down on fire, and yet it could still be like a top five or a top ten car. It's always been that way for years and always will be. But and to think we gotta do this shit again in the chase twice with the Napa five hundred and the EA Sports five hundred. Like and I hope I can get the the webcam mic fixed as soon as possible. That way we can stream the Brickyard 400 in, in the summertime in July. Even if it's beautiful weather out, I'm gonna you know pass that up to watch a race I wanted back for the longest time. I was one of those people who I want who I want I who I um I wanted it back, so I better hold on my end of the bargain. Even if it could be 85 degrees out there, I'd still stay, I'm still i still going to stay inside for the Brickyard 400 and see how fun that's going to be. And I'm not going to go outside to that day at all. So it's not going to hurt, you know, to miss one whole day of nice weather. So, but, but we got um, May, June, we got three, it's, oh, 
And we only got three more months to have to do this. We got plenty of time to get in all the warm weather adventures while we can before we take one day off from it. But, but yeah, but the Toyota is that, you know, when part of that, you know, demo, small demo derby shit show in that second half, stage three and beyond, the Toyota had a good plan. And I had two hats on, Austin on one side, John Hunter facing the other way. And, John Hunter and the Toyota and his Toyota teammates had a good plan until he ended up, you know, you know, killing it by running into the back of one. I can't remember who he ran in the back of. I think he ran into. Did he run in the back of his own teammate or did he run in the back of Bubba? I know he ran in the back of Bubba, yeah, and caused that uh, caused half the almost all the Toyota guys to wipe to like wipe each other out and eat shit and die, except for three of them. The eventual winner, Ty Gibbs, and um. Oh my God, who is the other guy? I think Truex missed it too, but, oh my God. And Hemrick, Hemrick was cooking early in the race. Hemrick was cooking. He had a shot at getting a, at getting his first career Winston Cup win and second ever NASCAR, NASCAR sanction win. Zane Smith had an opportunity to win, had an opportunity to compete for the win too, but a stupid ass penalty. And then you know, both, he did come back a, a somewhat, from, a, well, somewhat from the penalty. But then when the small one happened with, you know, the near miss with Chase and, you know, you know Christopher Bell getting taken out, um, I think Briscoe spun out to avoid the accident. So spun it to the turn three and failed to avoid making heavy contact with another car or the wall. I think Ryan Blaney well, was the one who rode up, but Zane couldn't check up quick enough and got in the back of him. It, he was able to continue the race and finish it on the track, but he was way out of contention. Well, no, he was way out. Of, he was out of contention at first, but then he got lucky with a few cautions, got his laps back, and was back in contention in case you know enough cars in front of him wiped out. He was in the right place at the right time to get his first career Winston Cup win, and I would have bought that race win diecast and put it alongside my. 2020 no MIS no fans diecast from the Craftsman Truck Series when he won on Genevieve and Nueva's birthday that should have been John Hunter Nemechek's race to win but that's a whole another tangent for another day another video but Austin Sindrick and Joey Logano won the first two stages and the Fords look like you know they had the race on lock as a whole manufacturer with Sindrick and Logano and Penske sweeping the first two stages McDowell in the most laps Nemechek led a good chunk of the race too at one point he was the one who led the most laps where McDowell passed though and guess what neither one of them won they both ended up in crashes and he had nothing to show for it at the end and as a Nemechek fan, I'm disappointed because he had a shot car that could have won this race and as we get his 2020 redemption from Ryan Blaney's own stupid ass move. And I feel bad for McDowell because he had that race on a one. Kind of like the 2022 finish. I can't remember. Um, I think it was Eric Jones who had that race one and went to block. He went upstairs to block the top lane and turned out to be the wrong move because Chastain came from the bottom and stole it. And this guy got a second place finish. And that was during the first 80 degree day at we day slash weekend of the 2022 season. And we recorded two YouTube videos in two days. Man, the all these all these times we've had since the 2020, since the COVID era started from the, the 2020, 2021 season. It's like we basically had it made not better in this era than we did in the OG pre-COVID era of the Sandy Ridge era. I mean, we've come a long way since that, the first half, like the first half of OG Sandy Ridge 2015, 2017. And then the second half, um, no, the first half was 25th, February 7, 2015 to early mid 2017. And then late 2017 to January, February of 2020 was the second half. And then the COVID season, which was a hell of an interesting time, weird, but interestingly underrated time in our lives. Now we look back on it with, you know, not being, not being able to go outside because of shutdowns. Then we were able to go outside, but at first we were terrified and stayed inside longer. My dad you know, came over to you know, get me out of the house as long as I go hang out with my friends safely with the social distancing, which was fucking awful. And then we, we, we got enough time to catch up on a TV fix on days we couldn't go outside. And, you know, 2020 should have been our first year. We were, we were going to watch less, less NASCAR races and to get away from the Spurs for the summer. But, you know, the Spurs stuff will save for another day, another video for like a whole tangent. But NASCAR gave me, I had no choice because we were just stuck. And then, which is why we took advantage of the vaccines coming on 20, the, 20, the 2021 season to like, 
march to less races and take advantage of a nice beautiful weather in 2021 and we continue this in 22 and 23 and now there's going to be warming up next for real next week going into the go next weekend going into the week go that following week then we're going to continue that trend because i'm never in the house when the weather's good i mean what was I going to say? But it's 2021, keep in mind, we went from winter to summer, which how fun in the sun started. It started this, you know, hashtag, you know, seasonal production trend of fun in the sun, adventures in autumn, winter wonderland. By 2022, spring is in the air. We all know about how good 2022 was and what a monstrosity 2023 was. It's why spring is in the air where we're, where we're at now in season three, I think it is. Is right now we're in, the, we're in the middle of the real test of showing the cold weather lovers and winter fans and, and hell, even the Christmas stands who their daddy really is and always will be, which is why the the truth big testament will be Sunday, June second, when we premiere season four of Fun in the Sun in the twenty twenty four Sandy Ridge Redemption. But it was a good race all around. It was not as chaotic as I expected. I mean, I thought Nemechek DNF'd and Zane was the one out of contention, but those cautions really helped Zane get back in the mix. And Nemechek did finish the race, but he was like three laps down and no shot at getting back on the lead lap. Because it was so damn late in the race, just like, you know, that's all plate racing always has been, you know. As far as you know, ever since they put the plate on these cars, I mean... I thought they were going to wreck, wreck it up, you know, before the white flag. And it's, it's, it's just like 2022 E and 2023 EA Sports 500 back-to-back. -back. It was a miracle. So does that mean in the EA Sports 500 into the fall we go to do the shit again for the chase? Will they wreck, like, before the white flag? Only time will tell. And like I said, we have to do this restrictor plate bullshit. Well, it's good bullshit for some people like me. Bad bullshit for some pe other people. Well, we're going to have to do this again in the chase twice more. And well, the only time I'm going to do it, last time I'm going to do it in the regular season is the Pepsi Firecracker 400 a week before the end of summer explosion and on my mom's birthday weekend. Like the week during, was it, is it? Yeah, the week after MIS this year because the regular season finale is Labor Day. This is the Mountain Dew Southern 500. And then, then we go to the chase and, you know, do those two plate tracks, um, the Napa 500 in Atlanta and the EA Sports 500 in Talladega. So... It's going to be a lot long rest of the season, the rest of the regular season before we get to the chase. And then the, out there starting is that time of year where it starts warming up more and more than it had been uh, this whole time with the three preseason episodes in March before Winter Wonderland season three came to an end. And after the, like the two episodes that came after that, you know, you know see that. Season ended, like I said. I'm only mentioning it if we have to, if necessary. But other than that, it's being swept under the rug. We're never going to fully talk about, and talk about it in detail ever again until next year. If we look, want to look back on the previous season, learn for the new season come December 1st, 2024. But, you know, now that it's been warming up even more, you know, we had, after the stupid-ass eclipse ended, we ended up getting our first, you know, we could have, if not for the eclipse, we could have premiered season three, spring is in the air Monday, but we had a premiere Tuesday, so that way we can have our turn on a shot of glory on our own, and guess what, it paid off, and we had a nice long warm front, and unfortunately this weekend it came to an end, but the warmth will be back in full swing for the first lower to mid, uh, low, mid, low, first we'll start off with upper 60s, lower 70s, but it'll be back in full swing before you know it, the first mid to upper 70s, last 80, like general 80 degree day of the season so it's going to be a fun time next week and going to early next week but congratulations to tyler reddick on winning the errands 499 at talladega and it's cool to see michael jordan at the track for once when one of the, his cars wins and gets to be in victory lane so therefore there's really not much else to talk about with this race concerning you know man nema i thought today was nema day in the sun but this wasn't meant to be. Guess we'll have to wait till the next plate race at the Pepsi Firecracker 400 at Daytona. But now I'm going to edit and upload this, go eat some dinner, you know, drink, finish the rest of this, you know, ice cold coke as I'm getting my YouTube fix on for today. And then we're going to shave the nasty ass whiskers and put my pajamas on. So I have a good night tonight and a better day tomorrow. Take care, everyone. Good night. I will see you all for the next video, whatever that may be, because we got talent show content coming. And with it warming up next week and going into the week at next, that following next week, we're going to have more Sandy Ridge content coming. And hopefully the first you know, ever standalone stand spring episode of Tim Duncan Can I Recreate, which will be the first episode in general since the first, the, like, you know, the, the oh, August 2022 when, you know, we reenacted his, you know, clutch, you know, 
layup in the two, uh, two random challenge for a regular season game against the Pacers. The first year we didn't have Robinson because we've done two standalone Garra actionis. No, three, three, three times in three years we've done, th we've done all three standalone spring Garra action Isudor episode. So. 2022, 2023, 2024, but we've never done a standalone Tim Duncan kind of recreate episode in the, for the springtime. So hopefully that'll change as we go. Uh, it gets set to warm up in the going from upper 60s, lower to mid 70s to upper upper 70s to 80 degrees next weekend going into next week. So it's going to be a fun grand old time. So you all won't want to miss it. So to all the, everybody watching the NBA and Platinum 400 next week, have a good time. If you're going to the race, enjoy it. Keep me posted on what's going on while I'm outside, and I will be following along on NASCAR.com as I'm having fun with my friends and potentially recording some content out there in the happiest place in Northeast Ohio. So, see you later, everyone. <laughs>